How you guys doing today? Doing all right? <clears throat> it's a great pleasure and honor to be on stage today. And I'm going to start off with a question. Is that okay with you guys? And the question is, can you please raise your hand if you're currently facing an obstacle or you just overcame one? All you guys saying should be up. All you guys saying should be up, right? Because if we're not in a storm, we either just got out of a storm or we're headed into a storm. So today, I'm going to discuss with you guys overcoming obstacles and reaching self-fulfillment. And when we think of obstacles, we think of things that are trying to hurt us, hinder us, slow our greatness down, and stop us from reaching the next level in our lives. And when we're faced with obstacles, we say things like this. Why is this happening to me? I don't deserve this. I should not be going through this. I should not be experiencing this. This isn't fair. However, an obstacle isn't just an obstacle. An obstacle is also an opportunity. And a challenge isn't just a challenge. A challenge also is a vehicle for change so we can grow. So let me tell you about the five stages of grief. The first stage is the now. This is the stage where we do not want to accept anything. Nope, it's not my fault. No, no, she didn't break it with me. I didn't fail that class. I didn't get fired. I didn't get evicted. No way, I'm not accepting it. No, it's not my fault. I don't care. The second stage is anger and rage. This is a stage where we get so furious and mad, we are ready to go off on somebody. And the third stage is bargaining. In this stage, we start to feel guilty. What if I was just nicer to this person? What if I just worked a little harder? What if I just listened? And the fourth stage is depression. This is a stage where we recognize and realize the obstacle as is. We recognize and realize the challenge as is. However, we're not strong enough to face it. Now, this fifth stage, acceptance, my favorite stage. The reason why this is my favorite stage is because when we accept the truth about our lives, and when we accept the obstacles and the challenges that we're faced with, we are now ready to take it on. So standing on this stage today, for three and a half years, I struggled with alcohol abuse. And by my third semester of graduate school, the faculty and staff had a meeting about me, and I was on the verge of getting kicked out the program. I was going to class high, drunk, sleeping in class, not really caring about much. I had a conversation with my professors who gave me a 70 on the paper. It was my final essay, and I went to her office, I said, ma'am, I did everything you asked me to do. Why a 70? She said, well, you missed this thing, you missed this thing. I'm like, okay. So we reviewed it, and she ended up giving me an 80. And that 80 led to me getting a 69.5 in the class, which was a C, guys, right? And that C led to me getting placed on academic probation, but only under two conditions. The first condition is that I had to repeat two classes in graduate school. And the second condition was I had to redo a whole nother year. I'm like, okay, well, let's get it. So my first semester of graduate school, I'm in class, one of the classes that I repeated, and my colleague looks at me, she said, Brian, you always sit in the front of class, and you're always so excited to work. She said, Brian, aren't you excited to graduate and be done with school? And I paused for a second. And I looked at her and I said, I'm actually not graduating this year. I'm actually graduating with you. And she was lost for words. And in that moment, guys, I felt really embarrassed. 
Have you guys ever felt embarrassed like that before? Ever? Nobody's been embarrassed before? Wow, y'all just some great people, huh? Wow, right, you're not human beings? Really? Right? But now that I think about it, that embarrassment led to my empowerment. In my last year of grad school, I made all A's, presidential list, got a scholarship from the T.L. Temple Foundation in Lufkin, Texas, and everything is feeling good. I'm going to graduate my master's degree, be the first person in my family to ever do it. However, three months prior before I graduate, something happened. My last grandmother passes away from cancer. And guys, when, it, when that happened, I really didn't know how to express myself. Really didn't. I was lost for words. But now that I think about it and I reflected on it, I still feel uneasy about it because if I would have handled my business and done what I was supposed to do the first year around, I would have graduated when she was alive. And even though she wasn't there in May of 2016, when I got my master's degree, the first person in my family to ever do it, I felt as though she was there in spirit. So I go home, and I'm feeling good about myself. I'm on the job hunt. I said, let's go. Got a master's degree. I'm 25. I'm young. I'm fly. I'm handsome. I said, okay, let's get a job, right? So I let a job, but they said, well, we can't start you until August 2016. So previously before the job, I took the license exam. This was my first time taking the licensed master's social work exam. And guys, I'm not sure about you guys, but have you ever been really confident right, for a job interview, for a test, even for a first date, right? I got really confident, I studied hard, and I went in, I sat down, and I read the questions, I said, no, no way, this cannot be the test. And I failed the test by 22 questions. Guys, I bombed it, right? So I continued working my regular job, my state job, feeling pretty excited about myself, right? Getting salary pay, no more hourly pay. And I say, you know what? I'm going to try again. So I try again in November, but this time I take a two-day class at UTA and I get more curriculum to study over. And this time I take the test, I'm feeling more confident. I'm feeling more bold and more brave. But I press submit. And when I press submit, it said, failed. I said, you got to be kidding me, man. But the, here's the crazy thing, guys. When I went in the lobby and I got my paper, it said you failed by two questions. I was heated. I literally said some inappropriate words. I did. I kicked the chair. I punched the wall. And the lady working there said, sir, is everything OK? I said, ma'am, no. I fell by two questions. Guys, does that bother you guys when people can clearly see you're not okay and they ask you, are you okay? Doesn't that bother you? You can see I'm mad, right? So I continue working my state job some more and I try again March 2017. And this time I'm feeling the same as the last time and I take the test and I press submit and it says you failed. So I filled the license down all three times. I said, well, Brian, I'll never have a private practice. I'll never be a licensed social worker in Texas. I'm just a failure. Yep, Brian, you're a failure. That's what it is. That's the facts. However, the next day, I consulted with my mom. And my mom said, son, it's just a test. It's not the end of the world. She said, maybe there's something greater in store for you. She said, what about the motivational thing you do? She said, son, don't you remember when you spoke to your cousin's high school to over 250 seniors and they loved you? And you post up on Facebook about boss up and go get it? I said, yeah, mom, you're right. I love that lady. Mom, raise your hand. Thank you. So two months later, I resigned from the state job I was making nearly $60,000 salary at 26 years old, got two cars, got an apartment, but I resigned with no job security, right? Pretty crazy move, right? But I took a leap. I said, I know something greater in store for me. I believed my mom's word, and I applied it. So I ended up landing a new job in behavioral health a month later, 
that I still do now that I love and enjoy. However, in that month off, I did a lot of self-reflecting, did some speaking engagements at churches and schools, and I realized I had this speaking gift, this speaking voice, I thought. And I said, hmm, it's time to change my life around. I want to inspire people. I want to motivate people. I want to empower people. And two months after I left my state job, I quit drinking alcohol completely. And I started to change my life around. I started to go to hang with different people and go out less and live a more conservative life. And I realized that I was changing. Right? And over the course of years, I've spoken at churches and, and schools and workshops and conferences and all these great things, even became a self-published author. And I'm thinking to myself, Sometimes in life, we can work so hard for something and not get it, only to be redirected to do the thing that we were truly created to do. And sometimes in life, your biggest breakdowns will lead to your biggest blessings. And other times, your biggest losses will lead to your biggest lessons. So now when I think about it, being an alcoholic for three years of my life, that happened for me. Having to redo a year of grad school, getting placed on academic probation, that happened for me. Failing the license, master's, social work exam, all three times, that happened for me. Like quitting my state job, making nearly 60000 with no job lined up, that happened for me. Everything happens for you guys and never against you. You are already the individual that you want to become. You only have to bring it out of you. Sometimes in life, we have to give up some things we love to become someone we love. So I talked to a friend, and he said, Brian, like, how do you overcome these obstacles? Like, how do you think? What's your perspective? And I said, well, first and foremost, my friend, perspective is very important. Because I believe how we view our situation will be how we deal with our situation. And I said, my perspective is the other person. He said, Brian, the other person? He said, Brian, stop being so deep. Just tell me what it is, man. I said, no, the accountability of the other person. And he said, tell me more. I said, well, the moment I realized that I could change people's lives and impact and inspire if I just got through my obstacle, if I just overcame it, if I just chose to walk in my purpose, I said, why not be great? Some of y'all right now, guys, you're going through things right now, and I guarantee you, the moment you think about the other person, your family, your friends, your, your coworkers, your mentors, you will start to go harder at overcoming that obstacle. You will start to put more energy in getting through that challenge. This is why I believe when we overcome obstacles, we are able to reach self-fulfillment. And when we are living a fulfilled life, we can walk into our purpose. And I believe our purpose is unlocked from our past struggles and our life processes. And you don't have to be perfect to walk in your purpose. But the more you walk into your purpose, the more perfect you become. And I believe my life purpose is to help individuals who are lacking self-fulfillment reach self-actualization, become who and what they truly, deeply desire to become. So I'm not sure what you overcame. I'm not sure what you dealt with. But there's somebody else out there in the world that is trying to overcome what you overcame. There is somebody else out there in the world that is trying to deal with what you dealt with. And you, my friends, you are the vessel to helping that individual out. I believe when we walk in purpose, we are able to serve others in the greatest way we know how to serve. So guys and gals, go out there in the world be bold, be brave, and most importantly, be a boss. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs>